Okay, in world history, we've been talking about human population growth for hundreds of thousands of years. And we're trying to figure out what's that growth like. And it has been pretty slow and steady. It has taken hundreds of thousands of years, almost 200,000 years, to get to a billion people in 1800. But then things change. Around 1800, our population just goes crazy. One of the biggest causes is the Industrial Revolution and changes in technology. Where we And we're going to find out, and I want to hear your insight before we get into this, on what changes do you think would do this. So I want you to talk to your shoulder partner or your parents or somebody around you and before you do this. And I want you to write down three causes. Go ahead and write those down. What do you think are three causes the population would go from a billion people by 1800 to almost 8 billion people within the next 220 years. Think about that. That's insane. 200 years, we're going to almost go eight times as many people. And it took hundreds of thousands of years just to get to a billion people. Take a second. Okay. So a couple of the reasons we're going to talk about is the Green Revolution, for example. The Green Revolution is everything from the Industrial Revolution, which is factories and building things, Doing things like going from a plow, a simple thing like plowing the ground and tilling the ground so you could get seeds in there. But if you did that by hand, you could only do so much land a day and you need lots of people to do it. And even if you were wealthier and you had a, a oxen or a cow and some kind of, and you could drag the plows, you could do more land, but still you'd be limited in how much land you could actually till. However, with the, with the manufacturing of the steam tractor and then tractors, gasoline tractors that we use today, now you could plow tons of land. And if you ever go to Science Center, you can see how huge these tractors are in the back. They have an old tractor. They're ginormous and they could do tons and tons of land in a day. It's just changed the whole game on how much food we can grow. Um, and also we've come up with other technologies like fertilizers and pesticides that keep the bugs away from our food. And we've also created what are called genetically modified food, where uh, we do at Bayer out in Creve Corps, where they come up with ideas on how they could keep pests and bugs and other animals to stay away from the plants with just uh, using their genes and the biology of the plant uh, to make sure that the bugs don't like the plant. So there's a lot of ways. And what's happened is we've grown more and more food, and with more and more food comes more and more people. Also, sanitation. The, the simplest things are just staying clean, and we take showers almost daily, or we know to take shower, except a couple showers a week. That is something that was a luxury uh, many, many years ago. Maybe the king or the queen would take a shower every day or once or several times a week. But it, first of all, you had somebody had to draw your bath. Now we have hot water pretty much everywhere in the, the wealthy countries. In America, people take showers every day. Um, and we have access to, it seems the water is so inexpensive for clean water. And it's it sounds silly to say, but it's true. Still today, the, the number one way to not spread disease and get people sick is just washing your hands. You should always wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds before you eat and after you eat, before you touch your face or your body, and that will stop the spread of diseases. And it really is one of the, still one of the biggest defenses even against COVID and other diseases but back then, they couldn't see things like germs and viruses. It wasn't until medicine and biology and the scientists had microscopes that we could even come up with these ideas that how dangerous germs are. And we stick them in our mouth and our ear and our nose and we touch our eyes and stuff. And just keeping the idea of running water in your toilet and taking the dirty waste from your body away from your house is so important. But up until 80 years ago even, and still in many places in the world today, they're dealing with diseases like dysentery, which is for, caused from like human beings and animals bathing and, and they're with, going to the bathroom in the water. And people are getting really sick from this. And it, can, it basically gives you diarrhea until you die. It's not good. So sanitation is super duper important. And that's really increased our health and our well-being as people. Vaccinations. We talk about the COVID vaccinations saving probably millions of people's lives. And how quickly we're getting that out. But you have to think in history, probably one of the greatest achievements of human beings was eradicating what's called smallpox. And honestly, it was the United Nations that we're going to talk about and we're going to uh, act out in class. The United Nations is the one that eradicated smallpox 
Um, and now we don't even think about that. But this disease wiped out millions and millions of people, maybe mi knocking out something like close to 90% of all the indigenous Americans are the people originally in North and South America before Christopher Columbus came. Education. Again, the fact that I'm teaching you and we're learning and talking about this stuff is being educated helps you explain to other people why is there so many people now and how do I how do we stay healthy and, and live long lives from now being educated on the importance of washing your hands is very simple but how to eat healthy how to exercise how to stay clean how to make sure you don't get other people sick very important concepts healthcare you think about we have just access to doctors things like surgery you know you can have a heart surgery now when they don't even cut open your chest to get to your heart they can go through your arteries. Um, cancer has really changed. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, somebody got cancer. The rate of somebody living with cancer was very low. Now that has completely changed. It has really reduced the number of people survive cancer all the time. Uh, and they go in remission and we know how to control it a lot better. And it's just amazing to think about. Now, what we're really talking about though is the future. Where does this go? How do we live healthy lives uh, as the population keeps growing, and we think it's going to grow to maybe something like 13 billion people. Right now, we're about almost 8 billion people. But we get to 13 billion people. Is that sustainable? So let's talk about what sustainability is. And sustainability is this approach and this belief that we are social uh, people, that we need, but we need to act on our behaviors. And our behaviors have to, but they also have to be in a way that is sustainable, that will keep this world going for generations to come. So for example, while recycling is great, and recycling plastic is great, however, plastic itself is probably not sustainable because plastic's made out of fossil fuels like gasoline and oil, and that stuff is uh, comes from the earth and destroys the atmosphere, and it uses a lot of energy to build plastic. However, We've had plastics made out of other things than oil for years. George Washington Carver, Carver the famous African-American um, scientist, he made plastic out of peanuts. He actually even built a car for Ford out of peanut plastic. So we've had plastics made out of fruit foods, and that might be much more sustainable if we make it out of things that we can grow and then regrow. Uh, and much better for the environment than something that is a non-renewable resource like a fossil fuel. Uh, but also, it's changing people's behavior, like not buying and not wasting things, not getting a new phone maybe every day and using all that toxic metal and throwing it away all the time. How do we change people's behaviors? How do we act in a way where we're conscious of the world around us and what we're doing? There's the environment. What do we do with the environment? Well, the environment, um, we do things that are unsustainable, like, for example, some of the worst things we do is probably cut down the rainforest so that we could grow uh, beef and meat and they can grow grass so the cows eat and people can have more and more beef. And cows actually produce a lot of methane that destroys the atmosphere and uh, creates more uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That's not sustainable. So how do we make sure that we protect our rainforest, but also at the same time, is there other ways to... To, that meet people's wants and desires for some kind of meat or could we go to like a synthetic meat that might be more sustainable there's many ways of thinking of, on this then you have the economic aspect of it because people the bottom line to a lot of people is what's called the bottom line they need to make money to survive and if something is not cost effective we can't afford it so like a solar panels cost like a million dollars to put on a house nobody's going to own them but if we make it cheaper and more affordable then more and more people will get solar panels and then we'll use less and less energy and less and less pollution. And that might be sustainable. And that might be a behavior that socially people are willing to pay for our solar panels. Or it might put it on houses, but maybe it'll make the, the house cheaper if we just add solar panels rather than gas lines and all this and that. I don't know. That's what we need you guys to create these ideas for the future. And think about sustainable things. It's got to be bearable, bearable, meaning... People actually can do it, equitable, that it's fair, and that people across the globe have access to it, and viable. It's actually doable. Like, Is it cost-effective with the environment? That would be sustainable. Now, the father of sustainability is actually an American uh, scientist, an ecologist, forester, environmentalist. His name was Aldo Leopold, and he taught 
up at the University of Wisconsin, just north of us. And one of his famous sayings that really stands up in my mind is he said, we abuse the land because we regard it as a commodity belonging to us. When we see land as a community to which we belong, we may begin to use it with love and respect. I want you to think about that. Commodity is something you can buy, sell, or trade. And I think we all know what community is, like the community we have here. So think about that. And what does that mean to you? Or do you think he has a good point? What's your perspective on this? Okay. And then I want to look at another quote again, because this is the guy that's really considered the, the, the geographer. He's kind of the father of human geography and human interaction with the earth. His name is George Perkins Marsh. And George, George Perkins Marsh's comment is this. The great question is whether man is of nature or above her. I want you to think about that. And what does that mean? Uh, what's his concerns about human geography and our interaction with the earth and the world and the environment around us? What could be some consequences if the quote is true? Do you agree with Marsh or do you disagree? Why or why not? So go ahead and put that in your answer. Okay. So let's talk about our future. We're going to go in real quick and we're just going to look at some key ideas and I want you guys to elaborate on these and we'll, we'll do more with this in class. But it says our future. United Nations has come up with a sustainability goals for 2030. Okay. So they have 17 goals and I'm going to show you those. Those are a couple, but I'm going to bring them all up because it's a, it's a, it's a 17 li uh, goal list and it's pretty big. So you got no poverty. They want to get rid of poverty by 2013. Wow. Think about that. People could take care of themselves. Zero hunger, meaning that no one in the world goes hungry anymore. That would make the earth and people more sustainable. This is very much the social aspect, right? Good health and well-being. Again, the social aspect. Quality education is very much the social aspect. Obviously, I really like that as a teacher. Gender equality, teaching people, treating people equal based on how they, how they identify. Also, gender is a social construct. We're not talking about our sex, which is if we're born male or female, but our gender. How do we see ourselves and are we treated equal regardless of uh, and our identity is honored and respected globally? Clean water and sanitation. You think about it, but wow, there's a lot of places in the world where you don't have that. Affordable and clean energy. And we've talked about solar energy and other resources, like, and we'll get more into that. Uh, decent work and economic growth, having a fair job. Industry, innovation, and infrastructure. So we have companies and they have to make money and build things. Um, that's the economic side of sustainability. Reducing inequalities. Again, the social, like making sure people are treated equal and respected regardless of their their how they're seen religiously or racially or how they're viewed by other groups. And making sure they have a fair chance and they're treated equitably in the world. Responsible consumption. There goes back to our behavior, social. Climate change. Well... That's the environment. That's human interacting with the environment. Life below the sea. Well, fishing, is that sustainable? Uh, can you overfish? Do we give the fish a chance to actually have more fish? Life on land, how do we treat animals and mammals and birds and their patterns and migration patterns? Peace and justice and strong institutions. So having these great things like schools and uh, government that cares about the people and then partnership goals, whereas we as a, as a world have to work together, and that is the United Nations, a diplomatic uh, world that is facing new challenges. And we're going to get into this in class.